hello there. Uh, DSP here. I didn't hear you come in. And uh, welcome to another edition of the Hateful Truth video game review series where I give you a maximum truth and minimum bullshit regarding the latest video game releases. And... Uh, <laughs> uh, let me tell you something. <clears throat> a couple years ago, when the new console generation was released, right, and we heard that the PS4 and the Xbox One were going to bring groundbreaking new visuals, amazing graphics, cool new technological advancements that were going to allow game developers to bring the next generation of gaming to your living room, I was just as hyped as everyone else, although I always take it with a grain of salt, meaning, okay, that's great that the new consoles are coming out, but what realistically are you bringing to us? And... In the past year and a half that both the PS4 and Xbox One have come out, it's been, it's been just few and far between. When you look at the games that have been released that are these next-gen console exclusives, where you can say, wow, that was definitely a, a, an amazing example of what's going to be done in this new console generation. In fact, more often than not, way more often than not, you end up getting something that's amazingly overhyped. It's like the next great hope, right? Uh, the big the big hype that's going to be the big push for the next generation, and then it comes out and it disappoints. We've had so many of these in the past year in particular, with Titanfall on the Xbox One, Destiny on the PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, of course, that had <clears throat> last-gen ports of it as well, but it was just as overhyped of a game as anything else. Some games that weren't necessarily bad, but weren't exactly amazing system sellers, such as Infamous Second Son, or even Knack, you could reference, as a launch title for the PS4. And as you look at these games, you realize they all had potential, right? If you actually look at them, the core ideas, the, if you, if, when you heard this on paper, you said this could be great. But then when you actually got the game and you played it, you realized it wasn't all it was cracked up to be, that maybe the direction, the creative direction or the director of the game didn't really have a full vision of what they wanted to do or kind of lost the idea or the creativity or just the originality of what the idea was somewhere in the creative process. Something that sounds great but doesn't end up being something that is as great as the original idea. So what I'm here to talk about with you today is a game that I think many people had high, high hopes for back during the E3 event of 2013 when the PlayStation 4 was uh, originally announced, okay? Now, originally the PlayStation 4 had a launch event earlier in the year, but at E3 finally it was like, let's talk about the games that are going to be coming out for this thing. And one of the biggest ones that were talked about was called The Order 1886 by Ready at Dawn, which is a game developer who has made previously pretty decent outings. If you take a look at some of the things, they made a God of War on the PSP that everyone really liked that eventually got an HD upgrade for the PlayStation 3 because it was such a good seller on the PSP. And, uh, and similar titles to that. Had they ever done a mainstream console game? No. And so everyone was ready to give them the benefit of the doubt with the Order 1886 being a PS4 exclusive. Now, two years ago, when we saw the first trailer for this game, it looked amazing. And the premise sounds good, too. It's a group of knights, per se, of the Order in 1886 London, who are a secret society of fighters of evil. Now, at first it was unclear what it was going to be. Later on it was revealed it's going to be monsters like lichens, a, a, you know, which is another word for werewolves. And we're like, wow, a, game, a next gen game with great graphics, monster hunting, third person shooting gameplay. This sounds interesting to us. And all of that being what we heard for two years, okay, about the Order 1886, got everyone super hyped. Now it was a little suspect because for over two years we're waiting for this game and we're not really seeing any gameplay. Then all of a sudden at E3 last year, they run this new demo of the game that's basically a boss fight against a, a, apparently a, like a boss werewolf. And it's interesting because the werewolf's kind of stalking the character you're shooting, but you can't really stop the werewolf. And it's unclear what exactly is the gameplay really going to be. Is it going to be a typical third-person shooter? Is it going to have other elements implemented in it? And no one was really clear until like a couple weeks ago when finally they released some gameplay footage of third-person shooting against humans. You're like, okay, so there'll be segments of the game where it's not just monster hunting. You'll be fighting generic humans. And then when it was announced there would be a review embargo on the game, until the Thursday before release, because the game was released on a Friday, you're like, uh-oh, does that mean something? And then, of course, the big controversy, which I'm going to basically get dismissed right away and get it out of the way. 
someone got an advanced copy of this game that basically wasn't supposed to because they went ahead and did a YouTube playthrough of the game weeks before release, which you're not supposed to do. I'm completely against it. I hate these people who find these underhanded means to get games just to rush a playthrough out on the internet to get views and try to make money. It's bullshit, okay? And this guy... Luckily, he got his channel shut down, but the damage was already done. Apparently, the playthrough was five hours long, and then the whole internet buzz. How could this game be five hours long? It's a next-gen game, console-exclusive, $60 retail release, five hour long? What is that? That's ridiculous. We want more than that in a $60 retail release. Which then led the game developer Ready at Dawn to go on a Twitter defense campaign, saying, well, no, uh, you know, listen, to, just because the game is short doesn't mean it's not good. Uh, also, we we adamantly say, no, it is not only five hours long. We can't even believe someone could beat this game in five hours. That person's a liar. Yada, 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 yada. So all this controversy and everything going on, when I played the Order 1886 this week, I approached it with an open mind. I said, I am going to play this game and not let any of the nonsense around everything that's been said about the shortness of the game or whatever affect me. I know there's been some reviews being released that are negative, and I'm not going to listen to it. I'm going to objectively play this game and tell everyone what I think, all right? And that's exactly what I'm going to do in this review now that I've got this big intro out of the way. And you might have noticed during that intro that I, there were some video clips. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to do my best to integrate video footage into the Hateful Truth game reviews now that we're moving forward and I have better editing software. I'm not promising you the world. This is the first one that I've done it. So please be very, very lenient with me if you don't think it's like the best production quality. In addition, as of right now, I'm not going to put any game audio into the review because this is on my vlogging channel, and my vlogging channel isn't protected under the guise of being a uh, managed partner channel like my gameplay channel DSP Gaming is with Machinima, and I'm afraid that if I put in audio visuals that they may start giving me copyright flags and shit, so I'm just going to put little clips here and there, okay? The Order 1886. Yes, the premise of the game is that you are a elite squad of knights who basically were founded by King Arthur back in the day, which is an interesting plot twist. And you have been over the ages protecting the people of London and all of Europe from these basically half-breed, almost like uh, spy monsters. Like they're kind of living as a, as a second underclass of society under the eyes of everyone and it's your job to basically sniff them out and try to exterminate them, okay? So that's the premise of the game and you're like, wow, that sounds really great on paper. Spoiler alert, this review is going to cover a lot of the plot points of the game because that's one of the major gripes I have with the game. So if you haven't played the game and you don't want to be spoiled, I recommend you probably don't watch the review. But you know what? By the time we reach the end of this review, you're not going to want to play the game anyway. So let's continue, all right? Um, so, listening to that, you're like, wow, it sounds to me like this game will be great. The game opens up in media's res. Now, for those of you who aren't, St you know, st students of, of literature, in media's res means a story that starts in the middle, jumps back as a flashback as you go through, through the story, and then you eventually reach that point in the middle, and then it progresses on. So you start out as imprisoned. Okay, what happened? You're, who are you? Why are you in prison? By the end of this segment, you find out as you're escaping the prison that you were once part of the order, somehow you betrayed them, and they're out to, to either keep you imprisoned or kill you, and you escape. Then the game goes back several months from when that happened, okay, to a point where you were part of the order. You were established knight. And you're like, okay, so this is cool. You're going to jump in. You're going to find out what happened. Maybe there was some monsters. Maybe you, did, you were double aging. You were working for the monsters, the lichens, or whatever. And you're really intrigued. What could this be? And as soon as you start to play the game, you get blown away by the graphics. Because this game, I will tell you this, if anything I can say about the game... The best thing about the Order 1886 is the graphical engine. And I will say this, and I'm not going to say this lightly, especially with all the games I've played as of late, the Order 1886 is the best-looking console game I've ever played. Okay? It just is. It's leaps and bounds above anything else I've played. When the game started, I thought it was a pre-rendered cutscene. No, that was the actual in-game engine that was running. And as you see, a seamless integration from action to cutscene to quick time event, you'll a lot of the times be fooled because, again, you're so used to these pre rendered cutscenes in other games, you didn't realize there was going to be a moment where you had to do interaction because of a quick time event or anything like that. And you end up failing the quick time event because you weren't ready for it. So, in that regard, the game is amazing. Like, I'm serious. That first scene where you walk out into a balcony and you look at all of London and you see the amount of amazing detail that's in front of you, you will be blown the fuck away. 
And I will say that never really ended. The whole game has stayed at that production level, triple A production levels for graphics, the graphical engine, the desi art design, and the art direction of the game. You're going to be walking through London and finding these crazy little details. Every little banner that's been posted to a brick wall is legible and has a full amount of information on it that you can read. Unlike other games, oh, it's just for scenery. You look at it, it's pixelated as shit and it's way worthless. I was in the subways of London and I found this sign that said, no spitting. No spitting? When the hell do you see a sign anywhere that says no spitting? And I was like, gee, I wonder in the late 1800s that was a cultural thing. People were spitting like, you know, because maybe tobacco chew or whatever and it was a thing and they actually looked that up did their research and integrated it into the game. That is amazing and I hope, if anything, that the graphical engine of this game and the art directors of this game go on to great things. I would love to see, I said this during my playthrough, this graphical engine used in a game like Resident Evil or Silent Hill or any, you know, uh, survivor horror style franchise where this level of detail, I would have shit my pants if there were zombies running at me in this game and I was dealing with that with this kind of graphical engine. It's that good. The lighting as well, I want to say the lighting, a lot of times there's things with lanterns and there's the lighting of the sun. Really amazing. Alright? <clears throat> as the game starts and you're so taken aback by these graphics, but then you start to realize something. Man, I'm walking pretty slow. I can't seem to walk at like a faster walking speed. Okay, maybe they want me to maybe look around and that's why they want me to soak in the details. As you play the game, you're going to find there are many segments in the game where you're just expected to walk from point A to point B. There's really no reason for it. There's not any story elaboration during that period of time. Maybe you're looking at the walls and you, oh, I found the newspaper, and you pick up a news article that's pertinent to the story. But for the most part, you find yourselves in these parts of the game walking really slowly, and you might say, why is that? I have a theory. I think that this is their way of padding the game making it longer, but in addition, allowing the game to load. And what I mean by that is there's really no significant loading times in the game. It pretty seamlessly loads itself and jumps from scene to scene. The problem being, I think it hides the loading with these extended walking scenes where you can't actually move the spe the, any faster than a snail's pace. It's incredibly annoying in some of these things. Like, move your ass! Why can't you walk faster? It's so weird when in some scenes you can run, other scenes you can't. You get confused sometimes. You know, am I supposed to be walking quick? Is this an action scene? What is this? So, after a long extended walk, uh, you finally get to some action where you're finally going to say, Wow, great, monster hunting, let's go. And immediately out of the box, you're disappointed. Because the first fight in the game has nothing to do with the lichens or werewolves or any kind of monsters. You're fighting generic humans who apparently have escaped from a mental institution and you're like, Okay, maybe they're doing this as an introduction to the combat engine. And the combat engine, uh, is it anything really to write home about? You've got a basic cover system by pressing circle, you'll back behind a wall or something. You can lean over and, and, and you can uh, blind fire or you can use the trigger to pull over. You know the same third person shooting system you've used in games for the past 10 years? It's present here. And there are a few interesting tweaks. They actually took the Deadeye system from Red Dead Redemption where you have a bar that the more people you kill, it builds up. Once it builds up to max, you press the button, it freezes time, and now you can rapidly shoot people all in front of you. It's literally the same as Red Dead Redemption, with a very minor tweak. Um, if anything, the one original thing about the combat system in this game are the weapons. And I do want to say that again. Another major positive about the Order 1886, the weaponry is quite in, in just interesting. You've got handguns that double fire with one shot, so it's like, ba-boom! and you can kill a guy with one shot. You've got uh, arc electric rifles that shoot out lightning bolts across the screen and can even go around cover, which is pretty neat. The coolest weapon in the game, in my opinion, is the thermite rifles, a, a premise that I've never really heard of in any game before, where it's a crossbow-like thing that shoots out thermite explosion gas. So you'll shoot out little pellets, they'll explode, you'll see a cloud. Then your alternate fire is you fire a flare at it, it ignites the gas and burns your opponents alive. So you might have a room full of dudes all perfectly behind cover, well, fuck that shit, thermite rifle time, pop, 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 foosh, and they go up in flames. It's strangely satisfying, especially for the most sadistic of gamer, to be burning people alive in what's looked like was going to be a third person shooter. But I digress, it's, the weaponry is, is interesting and unique in that regard, and for the segments of the game where you're doing this third person shooting and those weapons are available, you're going to have a lot of fun messing with them until you run out of ammo and you're like, shit, now i got to go back to the normal gun, which kind of sucks. So after you get through this first segment, 
of the game, you're like, okay, so that was the entry level of the game, right? Now we're going to get into the nitty-gritty of the monster hunting. And don't get me wrong, eventually you do run into monsters in the game. You run into about nine of them. And you may think I'm making that up or I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. In the whole game, keep in mind, this is the game that was advertised for two years as a group of elite monster hunters. This is your job in the order. This is what you're supposed to do, protect humanity from monsters. There's nine combatable monsters in the game. There's actually seven regular werewolves that are all completely identical and fight in exactly the same manner. And then there are two boss fights, which are also identical and are just quick time events. And I just want to reiterate here, that there's only nine monsters in the game that you actually fight. Oh yeah, there's one vampire, he shows up for like maybe 10 seconds, and you immediately stab him and it's over, and then later on you find out that maybe there are other vampires involved in the game, but it's never really fleshed out as any kind of a plot device or any kind of a combat mechanic. You will fight nine monsters in this game, two of which will be quick time events, and that's the extent of the monsters in the Order 1886. And now that I've told you that, Immediately, probably half of the viewing audience who are interested in this game are going to say, well, I don't want to play this then. Are you telling me it's just you fighting humans for 99% of the game? Yeah, that is the game. It's you're fighting generic humans like every other third-person shooter. There's almost nothing original during the combat of the game. But you know what? That's okay because there's almost no combat in the game. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The Order is a game that consists of 16 chapters. Out of those 16 chapters, a good four to six of them are cutscenes. I'm not joking. You may say, what? Yeah, it'll say, chapter four, show you a cutscene for five minutes where there's literally no interaction. Maybe you walk down a hallway, then it's over, it says, chapter five, and the next chapter starts. To the point where it was happening so frequently that I started joking in the game, chapter seven, you pulled your gun out and killed a guy. Chapter 8, you side-rolled. Chapter 9, do a little quick time. It was that frequent in the game where you were like, what? How can you say a game has 16 chapters when a third of those chapters are cut scenes where you really have no significant input whatsoever into the game? I don't know, but that's what they did with this game. And you're like, huh? I'd say probably out of the 16 chapters, 3 to 4 of them actually have significant gameplay, meaning maybe you're traversing through an area, you're taking cover and, t and firing and fighting several different uh, human-style enemies, and every once in a while, in a rare occurrence, you'll run into a lichen who you'll actually fight, and you're like, wow, finally some variety, it's over far too soon, and you're back to the boring third-person shooter gameplay, or back to a cutscene. And then, of course, the other big thing that a lot of people have been talking about, the quick time events. I am not anti-quick time event, I want to make that clear. I may not be good at them, Okay, I may suck a lot when I do quick time events for the first time, it's like trial and error, and then once I play it and I die once or twice, I learn the pattern and then I can usually get through the quick time event. But the amount of quick time events is out of control in this game. And I want to reiterate, there's two boss fights in the game that are entirely quick time events. They're not actual fights, it's just button timed button presses, and it's like, what were they thinking? Um... Do I really care? And it's some of the things are just laughable, like, there's a key, and you need to press right thumbsticks to stretch and get the key, and if you don't press right thumbstick, you just stand here like this and never grab the key, and the game never progresses. Groundbreaking next-gen gameplay, ladies and gentlemen. To which, a lot of the time, during the Order 1886, you may be saying to yourself, is it gameplay? And there is this big, diversified opinion on what constitutes a game and gameplay in a game. We've had releases over the past five years that really have pushed to the limits what you could say is an interactive movie and what's a game. Take a look at a game like Heavy Rain, where, yeah, most of the things in the game were dialogue choices and button mashing. And that was really it when you think about Heavy Rain. But Heavy Rain had this cool murder mystery plot line. It had the element that if you fuck up and you kill someone, they're out of the story for good and you get a different ending. There were insane amounts of endings to that game with different variations and incredibly high replayability. Even though the game was five hours long, you could beat it in, you know, four to five hours if you knew exactly what you were doing and you weren't padding your gameplay. You'd want to replay it to see all the different options, to see if there were different killers, to see who survives and who doesn't and what happens. Right? And there were even trophies set up in that game appropriately to make you want to get all those different endings because they were different end goals and rewards for reaching them. The Order 1886 is a seven hour long, and I'll say that again, 
a seven hour long game. It's not five hours like that YouTube guy who fucking stole the game or whatever and played it early. It's about seven hours. My playthrough, in fact, clocked in at about six hours and 45 minutes. Keep in mind, I actually went out of my way a lot of the time to explore the areas. I found several of the optional audio logs and collectibles in the game, and it still only clocked in at about six hours and 45 minutes. In addition to that, there's zero replayability in the order, because once you beat it, that's it. There's no alternate ending, there's no alternate scenario, there's no arcing paths that would make you want to go back. Even from a, a game player standpoint, wanting to collect every collectible is a waste of your fucking time, because guess what? 75% of the collectibles that you find in the order have nothing to do with the fucking game. I'm not joking. Usually in a game like this, you find something, you're like, oh, okay, I saw, oh, an interesting side content plot point. Oh, here's something I would have, wouldn't have known if I didn't pick up this important scrap of paper that's a note or an article or an audio log or whatever. The majority of things you find in this game are completely fucking worthless. The newspaper articles just basically recap what happened in a chapter or two previous. And so there's no reason to read them because if you've been playing the game and paying attention, you know that just happened. Okay? The... Other items can be random. Sometimes you pick, oh, a tw oh, one of the model ships. And you're looking at it, you're like, why the fuck am I looking at this? Why is this even in the game? Except to pad it to make it look like it was something important and it wasn't. The audio logs are the worst. The worst fucking choice of narrator I've ever heard in my life for the audio logs. Most of them are read by some elderly guy who purposely reads slow. Do I want to sit here? for 10 minutes while he reads this audio log the slowest possible manner? No! And in fact, for the first time ever in a video game playthrough, when I read the audio logs, I, I stopped the dialogue, and I fucking read them myself aloud during the playthrough. Because it was twice, half as long as listening, waiting for this guy to, to turn up. It's almost like they padded the game as much as possible. Worthless collectibles, slow audio logs, slow walking in tons of places, and it still was only 6 hours and 45 minutes long. So, all these things I'm telling you right now. Do I feel that The Order 1886 is a bad game? It's going to be dependent upon you and how do you feel about immersion into uh, a story. Okay, If you're the kind of person that you play games primarily because you like an interesting story, you may like The Order 1886. If you're not in it for challenging gameplay or replayability and you just want to go on kind of a triple-A blockbuster movie roller coaster ride, great. The problem is, The Order 1886 is basically a 6 hour and 45 minute movie. Really. Unlike those other games that I met, Heavy Rain, right? Interactive, you get different outcomes. So it's not a movie because your choices directly affect the game and then you want to replay it to see the other options. That's not the case with this game. You literally can coast through the game dying non-stop, having, you know, really sucky reactions to the quick time events, really bad reactions to the third person gameplay, eventually you're going to beat it because there's really no challenge to the game at all. The gameplay is so limited you're going to coast through most of it and it really is like watching a seven hour movie. Problem being it's sixty dollars and if I wanted to watch a seven hour movie I could just go fucking rent The Lord of the Rings once or twice and I've seen seven hours of a movie for like ten bucks and I didn't even have to pick up a controller and do anything. And that's kind of the point I'm making here is Oh shit! Lycan! Ah, I'm a werewolf! Oh, well now there's ten werewolves in the game apparently. But anyway, my camera stopped, I apologize for that. Um, the point I'm making is there's going to be... Fucking plane flies by. There's going to be a diversion of people who are going to say, is there enough gameplay or is there not enough gameplay? For me, being a kind of a generalized gamer and playing all these games these past few years, I've played games like Beyond Two Souls where the critics were very critical of the game saying that you, could, you really can't lose the game or whatever. But in Beyond Two Souls, I wanted to go back and see the other choices and things like that. And I'll be honest, the plot of Beyond Two Souls was better than the plot of this game. The plot of this game is kind of a typical conspiracy theory, mystery plot. Is there a conspiracy behind the order and the government of London? How are the Lycans involved? And then later on you find out there's a vampire or two involved. How are they involved? The ending is fucking terrible. It's the worst cop-out kind of ending where the game fades to black. There's a, a million things left unresolved in this game. Like, why is it that certain characters in the game who supported you all of a sudden turn on you right in the middle of the game? Almost like it's worse than the Anakin Skywalker turn in uh, Revenge of the Sith. It's li literally that bad. People who are like your best buddies, oh, he's guilty, guilty. It's like, what? 
Like, some of the shit in this game makes no fucking sense whatsoever. And the plot is kind of blah. Even when you finish the game, you're like, I would have loved it if they elaborated and said, what happened to this character? How's this character involved? What's this character? But instead, it just cuts to black because they want you to buy a sequel. Which I say, fuck that shit. Don't buy the DLC. Don't buy a sequel. Don't. Don't pander to their bullshit. You deserve a definitive ending at this end of this game, and you didn't get it. And it's bullshit. And then, you might say, well, what about the game itself? Okay, there's limited gameplay, uh, but what about bugs? What about production values and stuff like that? I'll be honest, there's almost no bugs, if any bugs. I couldn't really find a bug in The Order 1886. There were some frustrating parts. There were a couple parts where there were cheap instant deaths, and you had to replay them several times in order to figure out what's killing me instantly so you don't get hit by that RPG rocket and you can actually survive. There was one part of the game where the AI was so fucking stupid, I literally ran up into the faces of three enemies and just went blah, 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 and they just stood there Duh, and did nothing. And that's sad to see that this game is supposed to be the next evolution, right? The next gen game. It, for the little bit of gameplay that's in this game, you would think that they would have put insane amounts of effort into that gameplay to make it challenging and or original. And to see so the three guys with drool coming out of their mouths, and you get their faces blown the fuck off, is pretty disappointing. But for the most part, the game is refined when you are doing actual combat. It's passable and it's acceptable and you're not going to say, man, this is frustrating or it's not functional. It seems to be really well polished. And I really want to, at that point, saying the word polished, I want to jump back two years ago to the release of the Xbox One. There was a launch title for that system called Rai, Son of Rome. And the graphics were amazing. They were really highly detailed and there was flawless, seamless integration of cutscene into the gameplay of the hack and slash of the game. And when you watched cutscenes of this game or previews of this game, it looked like it could be amazing. And then when you actually played it, you realized it was boring, it was repetitive, it was the same fucking combat over and over and over. And it was about six to seven hours long. Actually, I take it back, I think that game was actually five hours long. And a $60 retail release, I basically described it in my review as an incredibly polished turd that you could take a piece of shit and you could shine it up real fucking nice, you could spray it with potpourri and cologne and all kinds of great scents and dress it up nice in a tuxedo, but it's nothing you could do to that turd is going to make it not fucking stink. It's still a turd, okay? And that was kind of the case with Rise Son of Rome. Here's the difference between Rise Son of Rome and The Order 1886. Rise was a Kinect game that was changed to be a console launch game for the Xbox One. In mid-development, they were told, drop your plans for Kinect. we got to make this a console game because we need some kind of a game for launch for Xbox One, and it needs to be different than our other lineups. It can't be a shooter. Your game is now a, a mainstream console game with, with you know controller control. Forget the Kinect shit. Make it a, a major game. So they had to drop everything and kind of rearrange the game to make it a console game. And for what they did, the game's playable and the game's fun for five hours. And you say, why did I pay $60 for five hours? The Order 1886 didn't have that problem. This game's been in development for over two years. It was actually delayed. It was supposed to come out in late 2014 and got delayed to early 2015. So they took more time to develop the game. Where did the time go? Unless you're going to tell me that it went into the graphical engine, okay? The art direction, right? The, the amazing amount of detail in the universe, or maybe designing the cool and unique weapons of the game. If you're going to tell me that's what came out of those few months, good on you, because if this game didn't have those, it would have no fucking redeeming qualities. The Order 1886 is a fucking disgrace. It's an insult to gamers who are going to shell out 60 fucking dollars for a game in this day and a game, a game, I can't even speak anymore, a game in this day and age to get a six point what, seven, five hour experience with no replayability and really nothing original. You can literally skip the Order 1886. You've missed absolutely nothing but the best graphical engine on the planet. So guess what I'm going to tell you? Do not buy this game. Guess what else I'm going to tell you? Do not rent this game. Here's what I am going to tell you. Watch someone else who wasted their money on this game play it on YouTube or on Twitch or uh, wherever you choose to watch someone play their gameplay because the only fucking thing you're going to get out of this game is like, wow, look at those graphics. Wow, look at the transitions. Wow. 
and that's all you're going to care about. If you watch the whole playthrough, trying to look for a good story, good gameplay, you're going to be sadly fucking disappointed. This game is an utter atrocity, because we want quality games for the new generation of consoles. We've been waiting. This is a game for two years. We were told it was about monster hunting. It's not. We were lied to as gamers. It's about third-person shooter generic combat against humans with a few monsters thrown in there to fool you and make you think that it's something else that it's not. It's boring. The characters make no fucking sense with some of the things they do in the game. Like I said, the personality twists like Anakin Skywalker. It's one of the worst directed games I've ever seen. And I never really, when I watch the credits of a game, look at names, okay? I just gloss over and say whatever. The director's name was, I believe, Dana Lay or something like that. That's a fucking hack director because this game had potential and if the director actually had good creative vision or even was a fucking gamer, they would understand that this is not acceptable for a $60 release. They would say, no, we got to add something original or different. We can't just have generic third-person shooter gameplay, throw a couple of unique weapons in there, but let's have more monsters. Let's have If this game had side questing for monster hunting, which was supposed to be the fucking premise of the game to begin with, for two years, that's what we were told, amazing, right? Would have blown everyone away. This game is a bait and switch. You think it's one thing for two years, they completely disguise it as something that it's not. You buy it, you're incredibly disappointed, but you're supposed to be, oh, look at the eye candy, look at the eye candy. Oh, look, the thermite rifle's cool. Yeah, but you spent $60 for not even seven hours of shitty fucking game and a terrible plot with no fucking ending because they want you to buy the sequel. Fuck Ready at Dawn. They don't deserve your $60. They don't deserve your time. Don't even rent it. This game is a blatant fucking skip. If you want to see amazing graphics, watch someone play it on YouTube. Fuck Ready at Dawn and fuck Sony for promoting this game as a monster hunting game for two years and insulting the common intelligence of the fucking gamers who ran out and pre-ordered and bought this game to come home disappointed again. Again. How many times this console generation are we going to be fucking disappointment after disappointment? Someone make a good fucking game. Please. I beg of you, make a good game because I can't take it anymore. I want something worth playing. Not that I spend my money and I end up so fucking dis with a limp dick in my fucking hand at the end of seven hours saying, what the fuck happened here? What a letdown, what a disappointment. The Order 1886 on my strict rating scale gets a four out of ten. You want to know why it gets a four? Because the graphics were great and the fucking the, the interesting art design and some of the original weapons. If those weren't in the game, the game would get a fucking two because it doesn't deserve more than that because it's that bad, that short, that much of a ripoff. You don't fucking need to waste your time on it. Fuck the order right in its fucking like an asshole. Okay then. I'm Dark Side Phil. I'm done. Thanks for watching the Hateful Truth Game Reviews where I give you maximum truth and minimum bullshit. I'll see you next time, where it better be a better fucking game than this piece of shit. See you later. Well, I'm glad that we're, we're uh, you know, getting rid of all the lichens in the world, making it a better place for the humans. Oh, wait. That was, I guess that's another game. Hello. Oh, God. Oh, I'm dead.